Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here, M0A.com. Welcome into now day seven of the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. Thank you for going through and pledging and committing to these first seven days, three more weeks to go. And I just hope you are walking away with so much amazing knowledge. I also hope you have pre-ordered your copy of Aviation Mastery, the book. It is literally taking my past 10,000 hours of flight instruction and compiling all into a book. The proceeds do not go to myself. They do not go to even m0a.com. They go specifically to our foundation, which has one mission, which is create the next generation of pilots by giving back to high school and youth aviation programs is one of our main focuses of that. So you are being a blessing to the future of aviation by pre-ordering your copy at aviationmastery.com. Today I want to talk about pedostatic system errors. And it's one thing to say what happens when the pitot tube gets clogged, what happens when the static port gets clogged. It's another thing to see it and live it. So allow me to demonstrate and show you exactly what's happening. We're looking now at a pedostatic uh, system simulator in a, well, in a way. Let me show you what's happening up top here. First, we have our simulated system. This is where the failures are going to happen, where you're gonna see the actual failures. Down here is the reference system of what should be happening. Over here, you can see what I'm going to do. I'll block just the drain, the ram air of the pitot tube, the static air, and activate the alternate air. So let's go ahead and let's start this airplane. Um, let me first work to make sure this is going to work slowly. There we go. And let's go ahead and let's get started here. Let's start the airplane off in a climb and let's just block the pitot tube drain hole. Ready? I blocked the drain hole. You can see the block right here. What has happened? Not a whole lot. Our airspeed is increasing just like it should. You can see the pressure differences here. If there were to be any pressure differences between the two there, not a whole lot is happening. Let's do something a little bit different now. Let's go ahead and let's block the ram air hole, this guy here, into the pitot tube. Let's see what happens. All right, block that. Well, this is really interesting. Why on earth is my airspeed climbing? I was always taught and thought that when this thing gets blocked, it just goes to zero. Why, with my pitot tube completely clogged, drain hole and all, was my airspeed increasing all the way up to the max? Let me show you something different. Let's start a descent back down and see if this helps you. And I want you to look at this, the pressure difference here, the pressure difference. Watch when the pressure difference gets close. Look at our airspeed indicator. It's now dropping as our pressure difference gets closer and closer here. So you're going to see this happen. You're going to see it reach its pressure difference right about here. It's just going to go to zero very quickly. Why is that? Well, all this time you thought, oh, my PO2 gets clogged. I get no airspeed. And that is the case for takeoff and those sort of things. But if this happens at altitude, you have actually locked pressure in there. So in this instance, we have locked pressure in there and we have begun to climb and then we came back to descend. And basically the instrument worked as a pressure sensitive instrument should and it began to act more like an altimeter than an airspeed indicator because we had essentially locked pressure in there. All an altimeter is, is aneroid wafers, basically this expandable chamber uh, with a certain pressure locked into it that expands and contracts as the pressure around it changes. That's essentially what you created in a way with our airspeed indicator in this exact scenario. Fascinating, huh? You always think, oh, it just goes to zero. Well, let me show you a little bit more here. So let's, uh, let's unclog everything. Let's start a climb back up. Everything's working normal as it should, right? Let's now block just the ram air, but leave the drain hole open. Now it goes to zero. Why does it just go to zero? It's gonna stay at zero, by the way. Because there is no pressure difference. I'm able to have my pressure change because the drain hole is actually open in this instance. So if it goes to zero when just the ram air hole is blocked, 
and not the drain hole. If we end up blocking the drain hole, you can see it now works like an altimeter because we've locked the pressure in there. Fascinating, huh? Let's unclog everything. Let's keep climbing and let's just block our static port now. Watch what happens. Static port is blocked. Why is our airspeed moving? I thought our airspeed, right? As long as the pitot tube is open, I should get airspeed. But our pitot tube needs more than just ram air. It needs the ram air, but it also senses the difference between the ram air and the static air that's coming in. Remember, it's a part of our pedo static system and the systems work hand in hand. So in this instance that we can see here, my vertical speed is frozen at zero. My altimeter is frozen exactly where the static issue occurred. And my airspeed indicator has gone to zero in this case, even though the pedo tube is open here. Let me just keep this airplane flying. Let's start a descent now. Now we can activate what's known as our alternate static air source. And that allows everything to kind of catch up and begin working closely. Again, it's, it's close. It's not going to be perfect. Alternate static air is just opening up a static port that's basically inside of the cabin. So the pressure inside the cabin is going to be different than the pressure that's outside of the cabin. So there'll be a tiny little differential. In fact, you can see it here. This is kind of showing nine zero. This is showing eight five. It's trailing just a little bit because the pressure inside the cabin is usually about 0.3 uh, different between the two, as you'll end up seeing there. Now, not all aircraft have an alternate static source. Some just have the big red knob in front of you. Some kind of up underneath the dash. If you have one, you know where it is, but not all have it. So this is why we teach the idea that we have to get pressure, uh, static air essentially into the system. You could always, if you found yourself in this jam, let's say IFR conditions, iced up static port, clogged static port, whatever that is, you could break the face of your vertical speed indicator. You heard me right, it sounds crazy. Why the vertical speed indicator? Well, number one, it's a part of our pedostatic system. Number two, it's almost in every case, it's a secondary instrument for scanning. And number three, it's the cheapest instrument to replace when you smash the face in. And you're gonna need a hammer or the backside of a screwdriver or a wrench to do that. You're not gonna be able to do it with your hand. That's some tough glass. I've never done it. This is me just teaching what they teach in the books from there but it allows you to get static air back in and get your altimeter and your airspeed indicator working again, close to correct. Not correct perfectly, but close to correct. So the pedostatic system has all its intricacies about it. We need to know it from a private pot level all the way up to a CFI check, right? It doesn't matter. You should be able to teach and explain these sort of things. M Zero Nation, I hope you're loving the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. I hope you have already pre-ordered your copy of Aviation Mastery, the book. Uh, many of you who are already customers have been inside the new learning management system. If not, by day seven, we're getting closer to having the general public in there as well. Right now, we're just letting our customers in there to really enjoy that. And most of those are in there. Some still, we're, we're working in slowly with that. We're trying, you know me, we try to do things at a mastery type level. And Missouri Nation, you're a blessing to myself, my family, our team here. If there is anything, anything at all we can do this week, this month, this year, most importantly, please let us know. Please don't hesitate to reach out. This is your chance to make 2021 your best year, aviation-wise, spiritually, financially, personally, career, whatever that may be. As crazy as it sounds, we are here to serve you. What doesn't grow dies and we're always growing, and you're growing by watching this. Thank you for that. Don't stop growing, don't stop learning. Have a blessed, amazing day, and most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you.